Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Mind Your Business. I am Alma Duncan. I am a corporate trainer, business coach, and founder of the Fabulous Woman Network. Every Tuesday at 12 noon GMT, I have the privilege of bringing you Mind Your Business, which is a show in which I get to talk about business, talk about different issues that affect us as small businesses, as new women in business and all that, so that you know we can discuss and basically grow our businesses so that we can create wealth and impact people. My heart beats. So today I get to talk about five common mistakes business owners make. Okay. Now I say five common mistakes, but I'll end up doing six because the final one, I call it a bonus mistake. It was my personal mistake that I used to make all the time. It it would take me so long to actually learn from it. So I'm going to share that as well. So the topic again is five common mistakes business owners make. And if you see me looking here, that is the laptop because I don't want to do things that I'm not supposed to do. I want to at least follow the notes that I've prepared for you. So sit tight, get yourself a kappa. Mine is not here, but yeah, be comfortable and let's listen. Let's learn together. Okay. So that we can make our businesses better. Now, let me just give you a background to this. I have been in employment since I finished school for almost 16 years now now i can't believe i am that old but officially i am only 22 years old (laughs) and in every single position i have been in i have had to serve customers that is number one also for over 10 years now i've been training on customer service and different soft skills training that currently my company ama duncan consultant serves many many different companies some multinational companies in terms of employee training and development and customer service training is one of the most popular trainings that we always do like every single year my team does for different companies and so that also means that i have to interact with business leaders and owners a lot Um, we do what we call training needs assessment to find out why in the first place they are inviting us to come train the the staff what is it that they need here and um, over the course of the 15 or 16 years that I've been working and then over 10 years that I've been doing trainings for different companies these are the top mistakes that I have been noticing that the managers themselves or the owners are making and hence contributing to poor customer service in some of these companies now the thing about poor customer service is not only does it stop you know customers from purchasing it stops new customers from also coming in so there's the issue of customer acquisition and then the customer retention at the end of the day they are the ones who are giving you the revenue so and then of course the profit so if they are not coming in then your profit is like dwindling and so this is why it is very important to talk about this um, topic of customer service and some of the mistakes business owners are making to contribute to it being poor. Now, there's another thing. So like I said, I've been doing a lot of trainings on customer service and usually it's for the staff. Usually when it's managers, we we do leadership trainings and all that. And I kid you not, in almost every single one of the training sessions that we have, I hear this exact phrase. My team and I, Rita would tell you, Ama, please train our managers to, Ama, please train our managers to, Ama, please train our managers to. I've heard it over and over again. And, okay, so this is a joke. I've even heard, Ama, train our customers to. (laughs) But that is a story for another day. So what are the five things that um, I want to focus on? Or maybe six, like I said, there's a bonus. Number one, not educating all employees about the corp- company culture or corporate culture. Number one, not educating all employees about the company culture. Now, I remember myself in one of the very first work experiences that I had in Ghana when I finished school, I had done my national service. I was so excited. It was a multinational company. Like it was a big deal for me. I was so excited that finally I get to work in a corporate environment in Ghana. 
I wore my nice suits, my nice heels. You know, I had just returned from abroad and, you know, so I had all these fancy stuff <laughs> that I had purchased here. And so I went to work on my first day expecting a welcoming ambiance, you know, expecting people to be warm and welcome me and usher me into the team and make me feel, you know, fabulous. <laughs> but I remember walking to the manager's office, the branch manager's office. He welcomed me, of course, asked me a few questions, um, asked me who had sent me. Obviously, they were expecting me, hopefully. And then he said, okay, now go to the front and start working. And I'm standing there like, um, I should go to the reception and start working. Yes. So I had been employed to go sell there was a certain product now i don't remember whether it was insurance or something i don't think it was insurance or maybe it was i forgot because this was about 13 14 years ago and i i remember just being confused now th the other reason i don't remember what i was even going to sell was that I, I didn't last there i think i was there for only about a week and then they moved me to another place but here's the thing on day one i was just expected to go to the front and start working apart from the name of this company i doubt i knew any other thing like i mean i'm sure i just prepared to do the interview and that was it but i didn't really understand who they were as a company apart from the fact that i had been a customer of theirs i didn't understand their values i didn't know their mission status i didn't nothing i didn't even know their their expectations in terms of dressing and everything i thought oh i would have to wear a suit but they probably had colors i didn't know nothing and i was just told go and stand and then work this was a bit confusing for me because prior to that the many and i had done a lot of different works <laughs> like different i've had different jobs before i had had different jobs before that and so um all these other roles that i, ha I had had i had at least a couple of days of orientation i remember in one particular job that i had i was going to be a call center person like i was based at the call center i was a customer service person i was trained for six weeks before being allowed to come and start speaking to insurance brokers so for me to go to an environment in which i was just told that day one go and then work it was shocking for me i didn't even know like i was just praying oh my god what what if i go and meet um, a customer and they ask me something i don't know that probably happened and i don't even remember now but the the thing is that i suspect they didn't take me through maybe a few weeks or so or days of orientation probably because i was a temporary staff this is the problem a lot of time people who come in full time we may have procedures that we take them through and orient them because we know that, oh yeah, they are permanent staff. They are going to be around for a year, two years, but temporary staff are probably going to be there for sometimes two months, three months, five weeks. Like I said, I was there. I think I lasted a week there and thank God I got another opportunity with that same company. I got a better opportunity with them because yeah, I couldn't survive in that place anyway. <laughs> so, the thing that the mistake that we make is that we are thinking oh they are temporary so they, they don't need to go through a lot of days or so of training but you are putting these people in front of your customers what are they going to tell your customers what do they know what do they know about your culture and i see this happen a lot for especially support staff so you know in most companies you have the full-time staff and then contract or support or agency staff however you call it we, we think that they are temporary, but they are still affecting our businesses. And a lot of times, these are people that customers come in contact with. And so if they are not prepared, they will still ruin the perception, ruin the service. And it's not really their fault. I couldn't be blamed if I didn't know what the products and services were. Nobody told me. Yes, I had the responsibility to also find out myself, of course. However, my company also had the responsibility to let me know what is expected of me as an employee, whether I was coming in as temporary or full-time. The customer does not know that. <laughs> the customer doesn't care. All they care about is, hey, I've come. I need this service. Help me. And then I'm standing there looking like, I wanted to say a word, but I won't say it. 
So that is mistake number one, not educating all employees about company culture. And then number two, this is similar to the first one, excluding some employees in key soft skills training programs. This is also something I see a lot. When I go to companies, I am pitching to them, um, I'm coming to organize a customer service training and I'm inviting or I'm asking that you bring some of your staff and they are asking their front of house staff like receptionists and all that to come. And I'm thinking, no, the accountant staff needs to be there. Security person needs to be there. Driver needs to be there. Like, no, 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 no. Why should I put them? They are just drivers. They are just this. They are just that. Think about it. Your driver is likely picking your customers from airports and different places. How is he relating to them? Your security person is welcoming these your um, customers in, helping them park. They need to be dressed in a certain way. They need to look at a certain way. They need to have a certain, you know, personality and all that to be able to meet these customers. Are they prepared? And yet, when it comes to soft skills, we are like, oh, let's take the front office staff or the whoever. And then we leave out these other support staff who actually interact with customers on a day-to-day -day basis. And then one key um, role is also those in accounts. We are like, oh, they are at the back of house. Have you ever entered an accounts office and, if, and then, you know, seen either people just wearing slippers and walking about or papers shuffled all over the place and people talking anyhow to customers? These are the same customers who have purchased your product and service and perhaps are coming to the, the account office to make payments or inquiries or something. They also need to be treated the same way as they would be treated at the front. People at the back, the way they dress and everything, it needs to be in sync with the company culture. So taking out a group, a group of people and then giving them that soft skills and then leaving the rest and saying, oh, these people don't interact with customers, so let me not put them there. It's actually sabotaging your company. And it happens a lot. I see it a lot of times. And for some companies, we are able to, you know, encourage the managers and owners to allow the entire team, including managers, to be part of the trainings. But sometimes we have to maybe do a separate one for managers, separate one for staff. Sometimes they're like, nah, if it's technical skills training, they are happy to send everybody on. The issue comes when it's soft skills training, like customer service and things like that. They are like, oh, it's just allow the people in front to do it. But no, everybody needs it, okay? So that is mistake number two, excluding some employees in soft skills training programs. Then the third one is not leading by example not leading by example that is the leader themselves you know there's this saying do as i say and not as i do <laughs> well we are human beings we copy what we are doing you know we do exactly that why should we do any different if it's good for you it's good for me as well and it has happened so many times i have been um what's the word i've been guilty of this myself you know it's so easy for us to make rules and we are putting things in place to make sure people don't abuse xyz but then we ourselves are not able to follow the, that, those same rules. And yet we expect that our staff, because they are so obedient and because we are paying them, they should obey. No, it doesn't work that way. We have to lead by example. If, for instance, at Fab Hub Ashanti, the deal is, look, I can sweep, you can sweep, everybody does all these work. There's nothing like, oh, you are the boss, so you can't clean the table. No, everybody does it. Whoever is avail available will do it. You get it? It's not like there are some people de designated for special things. Whatever pertains to, to Fab Hub, if I'm saying that we are all wearing African print, we are all wearing it. If I'm saying that we are all to be there by 8, 7.30, I am there. That is the rule and we all follow it nobody is bigger yes i know i'm, I'm human too sometimes you feel like ah this rule cry let me you know what what's the big deal they have to obey it i don't have to obey it. no it doesn't work that way if you want people to respect the rules you respect it yourself so that's mistake number three not leading by example another example that i want to give a i put it in the notes so let me talk about it 
you know how some companies have different values like um for Amadankan Consultant, one of our values is faith in God. You know, values are things that you believe in and you live and all that. In some companies, one of their values is respectful. And yet, okay, before I even come to the yet, you see these words splashed across staff areas, you know, on boards and stuff. So the staff will remember these words like respectful and everything. However, there are times that the manager or the leader will be found lambasting, blasting, insulting a staff right under the word that says respectful. He is too big to be respectful, but he, he or she, sorry, but expect the staff to be respectful. It doesn't work that way. We have to live the rules that we ourselves set for our staff. Got me? You got me? <laughs> so, number four. Hmm. This one, not hiring the right fit. I see this a lot too, especially in this setting. And I have been in HR, so I was employed full-time in HR for uh, over eight years, or eight years actually, in my last, before I quit my job. So I know what I'm talking about when I say, this is easier said than done, trying to hire the right fit. Because, you know, when you are in such a position as HR or someone who is able to hire in the company, you have all sorts of letters with interesting letterheads coming to you requesting for you to hire certain people because they are coming from a certain office or the letter is coming from this, a certain office or the person is the, is the niece or for aunt or for uncle, grandpa, boyfriend, sisters, brothers, uncle happens all the time and under pressure sometimes we are forced to hire these people and they come and what oh my uncle is the this or my aunt is the that or this is the and people are not fit for roles certain roles but we put them there because somebody has given us pressure to hire them that is one of the biggest challenges that i face i mean in our case, because it was really a super corporate organization, we had ways around it, but there were times that, Charlie, it wasn't that easy. One of my mentors, Joseph Che Ankra, Mr. Joseph Che Ankra, he's written lots of different books. And one of the things he said to me was, Ama, don't hire someone you can't fire. And he used this example of your mother-in-law. If you know you can't fire your mother-in-law, don't hire them. Because sometimes we hire people and they are not fit. First of all, the whole interview thing, as the traditional interviews we've been doing, is not working. People will write great CVs, come and convince you. If they can talk like me, they will out-talk you and then you will hire them. Only to put them on the job and realize they are not fit. Sometimes three months two months, one month, even a week into the job, we know that the person is not fit. But we are stuck. We cannot ha fire them either because they are not fireable or we don't know what to do, you know, we are, we, and then we are just stuck. Is that fair to the business? We have to think about the business, sustaining the business, making it grow. So by making the mistake in the first place of not hiring the right person, we are setting ourselves for big time wahala so don't do it i know it's easier said than done but you have to find a way if there's another place and sometimes the issue is even where you put them maybe the person doesn't have a warm personality and in you in the kind of company that you are people need to be warm because remember the customer is holding your cash you need to be nice to them you need to help them find the, the right products and services you need to engage them and you've gone to hire somebody who doesn't like talking to people just because somebody said employ them not fair <laughs> in my son's voice not fair so please not hiring the right fit is definitely one of the common mistakes and i hope you are watching these it's not helping our businesses the fifth point <laughs> Let me swallow for this one. The fifth point is not giving honest feedback to staff. This is a performance management issue. First of all, do we even have a performance management system in place? And if I use these three big words, performance management system, I don't mean anything ginormous. Just how you are tracking people's performance 
and giving them that kind of feedback so that they can grow so you know basically letting them know how they are doing consistently so that they can individually develop as staff and then it also helps you in you know your compensation your bonuses and all that those are other things that you know come with the whole performance management system it doesn't have to be sophisticated just calling people giving them feedback putting it in writing and all that you see there are some times that you just <laughs> You have some managers, let's say you, you hire someone to come and take a certain role, maybe you probably even push them, the person came highly commended or recommended or whatever, and you put them on the field, they are working and you realize they are not doing a good job. Some people, some people, you may know yourself, you will never tell the person that they are not performing. You're every day smiling, oh, how are you? How are you? Then they go in your head, you're like, hmm, this boy, I'll fire him, I'll fire him. The next thing, one day he's there and you're like, I'm not renewing your contract or I'm not confirming you after probation or something. And the person's like, ah, but what did I do? Yes, what did I do? Because they are not aware. Have we communicated clearly? And the issue sometimes is how we even communicate to them that they are not doing well. We say it, sometimes we say it in person or we, didn't, we don't say it seriously. We, we are not having conversations with them, sitting them down, making them see exactly what it is that they are doing wrong, explaining it to them, doing it for them to see this is the right way. We are not really, really making people understand honestly what it is they are doing wrong. And then we fire them and they are feeling so bitter and confused. We have to communicate honestly. A lot of times the issue is honest, honesty. Maybe it's like, oh, it's so difficult. How do I tell them they are they are not doing well, you know, maybe because of who brought them into the company or whatever. But that is not helping. If we are not communicating honestly to our staff, if we are not letting them know their performance and how it's not going well or it's going well, we are not developing them. We are not adding value to them. And then we fire them. So... And then, of course, there's also the opposite person who is not always smiling. He's always angry. He's always mean or whatever. And such a person, how do you tell that today I'm doing well or I'm not doing well? You get it. We need to have that clarity when communicating with our staff. We need to let them know clearly what they are doing right, what they are doing wrong. They need to be able to count on us, to be clear with them, to be honest with them, candid, whichever word, so that they can grow so that they can grow and help us with our dreams. Because as business owners, the vision is really ours and all these other people are helping us to reach it. Of course, by so doing, they also fulfill something for themselves anyway, right? Now I said the topic is five common mistakes, but I'm going to add a bonus topic. Last night when I was preparing for this, I felt it in my spirit that this is something I should talk about. Now, this particular problem is something that I, I, I was guilty of so many times. It will take me so long to learn. What is it? Posting memos and letters, sharing letters and all that to staff and thinking that they will read it. And then going to bed. And then when they don't actually obey the instructions or directives we are upset i used to do that a lot i would go into the boardroom or wherever would have a meeting and decide on something that i was in charge of hr so i would have to come and type a nice letter i'll use all my british brothel write all these words beautiful and then come and paste it on the notice board expect that staff will read and understand first of all expecting that they will read really second of all that they will understand in this particular company I was talking about, we had people with all sorts of different um, educational levels. Some had barely completed junior high school or even primary. Some had finished MBA. So it was like that range. We don't expect, or I shouldn't have expected that everybody would read and understand. And even for the people with the so-called MBA or BA or whatever, did they even pay attention? I didn't, I mean, it would take me so long to learn that it doesn't work that way. Just writing it and posting it. Unless that letter or memo has to do with salary increments. Even with that one, you know what they will do? 
they will pick the memo and then come to you in HR to explain. Madam, aha, uh -huh, so this one, you are saying that what? They will increase it. So if my thing is 300 now, it will be what? They will ask for explanation because it matters to them. But for the others that you are giving them some instruction that doesn't matter to them or that, that doesn't go down well with them, do you really think they will come chasing you with it? So this was another mistake I used to make. So yeah, six mistakes. There are many more, but I, I thought for the purpose of this, let me just pick two, a few. Which one of them are you still making? Yeah, I confess, I still find myself making some of these, you know, um, things like sometimes not leading by example, sometimes I, get, I can get guilty with that. And then I have to really, really um, be intentional about giving honest feedback. Sometimes it's hard, I know. Sometimes it's hard, but it's got to be done. Yeah, it's got to be done. So anyway, if you are a business owner and you know that your staff need customer service training and perhaps you are worrying that, oh, it's COVID time and I, I really don't want them to travel somewhere to go and have training. I wish it could be online. I gotcha. So I have put together four of the best customer service trainers we have in this country four of the best rita Krampa, she's been training on customer service for years she was a banker for about 24 years since she came out of the bank i have been working with her she also has her own consultancy she's one of the consultants i use um, for our customer service training she's amazing rich experience this is her job Prisla Wellington Asante, you've probably heard of Customer Services Africa, the lady with the power smile. See how my smile just started coming just because I mentioned Prisla. That is her brand. She's very well versed, especially in hospitality. And of course, when it comes to customer service, which better industry than hospitality to demonstrate it the right way? So she's one of our facilitators. Samuel Duncan, he's been in... Um, the banking industry for maybe 15 years, 14 years. He's been doing this for a long time. He's a manager himself. He, he works as a bank manager. He's a banker, but he's been in the field. He's been dealing with all sorts of customers. If you live in Kumasi, then you understand what I mean. And he's also one of our facilitators. And then, of course, the fabulous Alma Duncan, the bald-headed girl talking to you right now, is the final facilitator. I have been doing this for so long, so long, so long, too long. <laughs> I have been talking on exhibiting and doing the best I can with customer service. I don't mean to blow my own horn, but I've had very, very positive feedback for many of the customers I've worked with. Of course, I haven't always been perfect and that is why I am in a good position to teach as well because I can also teach and let you know some of the mistakes I made and why you shouldn't repeat them. So we are having a customer service training for professionals. This is actually a training we've been holding. This year alone, we've had two of such at Fab Hub Ashanti, but this time it's going to be virtual so that you, yes, you can be a part of it if you desire to if you feel that this is something you need or perhaps for your employees if this is something that they need then i encourage you to sign up the cl the the link clickable link is in the bio of wherever you are probably watching this on youtube so click on it or you can call us on plus two three three two four six two five two three three zero plus two three three two four six two five two three three zero Call us and sign up for the customer service training for professionals happening online. If you're a business owner, if you have supervisors, you need to train or you need to improve their customer service. Um, if you have different staff, it doesn't matter the level. As long as they can get access to the computers um, and the internet, and it doesn't matter which part of the world you're in. We've served customers in the US, UK, Belgium, Canada, Nigeria, many, many places. Yes, English is the language we use, but especially if we find that there's a lot more of the Ghanaians, then we can also do local. So we mix things up so that we make sure everybody 
gets um, you know what they deserve in that training so if this is for you it is happening on 15th I'm sorry not 15th April 24th April yes from 11 a.m. GMT to 4 p.m. GMT um, we're going to have a few short breaks in there so but it's going to be really relaxed and and even if you are not able to join live you'll have full access to the replay now there are different levels of discounts say different levels of discounts there's the fast action discount there's the early bird discount and there's a regular rate and after that the price goes up and we keep it so we'll continue selling the replay so if this is something that interests you even if you know you are not or you're not sure that you'll be available i encourage you to grab the fast action bonus which expires on 15th april if you're watching this after 15th april you still have access to the early bird discount which expires i believe on the 18th of april or so and then after that regular rate so there's no time if there's something you need i want you to grab it okay well i gotta go now before i go let me just recap so um the five mistakes plus one that uh, managers or business owners make and in which case it really disturbs um, customer acquisition and customer retention are number one not educating all employees about the company culture number two excluding some employees in soft skills training programs number three not leading by example number four not hiring the right fit number five not given honest feedback to staff and the bonus one the bonus uh, mistake is posting memo onto the notice board and expecting staff to read and understand so this has been my episode of mind your business today god willing same time next week right here on youtube i'll be premiering the next edition of mind your business until then you remain fabulous because you are bye